Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you find this video useful make sure you give me a thumbs up to encourage me to do more videos of this type and also subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will find additional videos of this nature, toolbox safety topic videos and leadership training videos. Today we need to talk about the annual training for HASCOM that most all companies are required to train annually on HASCOM uh, and today we're going to go through some of that training if you use this video as part of your training process make sure that you document it through a sign-in sheet and reference this video uh, there's three areas that we'll be covering we'll be covering the SDS sheet uh, and that'll include the 16 different topics that are required on the SDS. And we'll be covering uh, a, a sample label of how a label should look like on, on a barrel or any kind of chemical. And, and then we're going, to, we're going to talk about the final thing of, uh, of the, uh, the pictograms. So... As I stutter about here, that's fine. This is thrown together and kind of in a hurry. But uh, anyway, let's get started. And the first thing we want to talk about is the uh, 16 different sections of the, uh, picto uh, of the uh, SDS. So here we go, let's get started. All right, as you can see here, uh, section one, section one, if I can get it highlighted. Sex, section one talks about identification, which includes product identifier, manufacturer, or distributor name, the, the address and the phone number for that organization, an emergency phone number, and it'll also talk about recommended use and restrictions on use for uh, the chemical. And next we have section two. Uh, section two uh, talks about the hazards, uh, hazards or hazard or hazards identification. It includes all hazards regarding the chemical and required label uh, elements. And next there's the third section. And the third section is the compensate uh, the the, the uh, composition uh, composition information on ingredients includes information on chemical ingredients uh, and if there's trade secret claims that would be there as well uh, section four is for first aid measures uh, includes important symptoms and effects uh, acute delayed and required treatment this information would be important if there were an emergency and you had to transport someone to a hospital for an exposure. So that information is, is, is important. Uh, next is section five, which is firefighting measures. It lists suitable extinguishing techniques, equipment, chemical hazards from the fire. So that would list everything that would happen in case this product were to catch on fire. Uh, section 6, accident, Accidental Release Measures. It lists an emergency procedures, protective equipment, and proper methods of containment, containment and cleanup. Now, these sections will expand quite a bit when you look at the SDS. These are just recaps. Uh, section 7, uh, it has to do with handling and storage. Uh, it lists precautions for safe handling and storage including incompatibilities. If you shouldn't store it with an oxidizer, you shouldn't store it with oxygen, it would talk about that. Uh, see, section eight, exposure controls, uh, personal protection. Uh, it lists OSHA's permissible, permissible exposure limits, or PELs, threshold limits, which are the TLVs, and the appropriate engineering controls, personal protective equipment that might, de might be needed to deal with this particular chemical. Section number nine is the physical and chemical properties list. It lists the chemical's characteristics. 
That would be important for emergency response personnel, uh, emergency responders, uh, doctors. It could be uh, it, it, of what you're storing it with, uh, reactivity, so on and so forth. Uh, Section 10 deals specifically with stability and re reactivity. Uh, list identified chemical stability and possibility of hazardous interactions. Section 11 is toxic toxicological information, includes routes of exposure, uh, related systems, whether it's acute and chronic effects, and numerical measures of toxicity. Uh, 12 would be uh, ecological information, uh, what would happen to the environment. Uh, 13, disposable considerations. Um, now, these, these areas here, since other agencies regulate this information, it could be, it could be uh, the EPA or a, a, a local standard or authority that would be important for, that's who this would be important to. Uh, section 14 is transport information, how the product should be transported and identified during transportation. And 15 is regulatory information, if it's a regulated product, it would have whether or not how it would be specially treated or transported. And then section 16 uh, is other information includes the date of preparation or last revision of the SDS. Employers must ensure that SDSs are readily accessible to employees. Uh, most superintendents have an SDS book on the job site that they keep in their trucks that's available for employee review and we talk about it regularly during our toolbox safety meetings. Uh, the next item is going to talk about briefly is the labeling. OSHA has updated the requirements for labeling of hazardous chemicals and this was in 2015 and so that we have a standardized uh, labeling system. All labels will be required to have a pictogram, a signal word, hazard and precautionary statements, the product identifier and the supplier identification. Uh, you'll see here this is a, a, a sample uh, it would talk about product identifier, uh, product code, uh, product name, the company, uh, where the company is located at and the company information, uh, emergency response information. And then here it, it talks about some of the things that you would have to do, like keep the container tightly closed, store in a cool, well-ventilated space that's locked. Uh, so on and so forth. And, and then it'll talk about in case of fire, uh, what type of extinguishing agent should best be used in the case of a fire. And then first aid, how to, how to handle the first aid with it. That's another uh, requirement on the, uh, the label. Uh, next is the hazards pictograms, and we'll cover those in a minute, uh, of what kind of hazard it, it's associated with this chemical. And then I'll have a hazard statement, such as highly flammable liquid and vapor. Uh, could cause liver uh, or kidney damage. And then, uh, and then the supplemental information. So this would, be, this would be a label that you would find on, one, uh, on a, a chemical that's being, uh, on a job site or being shipped this is what you need to look for. And then you can reference back the SDS and it'll give you all this other information as well, except perhaps in more detail. Uh, and then finally, we wanna talk about the pictograms. Uh, here we have that in 2015, they also came up with a generalized pictogram for the hazard communication standard. It should require pictograms on labels to alert users of the chemicals hazards to which they may be exposed. Each pictogram consists of a symbol on a white background framed with a red border and represents a distinct hazard. The pictogram on the label is determined by the chemical hazard identification which would be found in the SDS sheet. Uh, here we have the 
picture of the chest with the, the star pattern in it. Um, it's a health hazard and it could be one of, of any of these. It could be a carcinogen, uh, a, a, a mutagenic type thing, uh, reproductive toxicity, respiratory sensitizer, uh, target organ toxicity, and aspiration toxicity. You could breathe it in. And then you have here in the middle on the top is flame. Is it flammable? Is it polyphoric? Uh, self-heating, uh, it it, does it emit flammable gases, uh, self-reactive, organic peroxides. These are the, some of those chemicals would use this pictograph to, to, uh, to tell them that the, it, 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 it's one of those hazards. And next you have the, the exclamation mark. Uh, it, 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 irritant skin, it could be an irritant, uh, uh, a skin sensitizer, uh, acute toxicity, uh, narcotic effect, respiratory tract uh, irritant, uh, hazardous to ozone layer, you know, like uh, Freon or something like that. And then next you have the sign that has the gas cylinder in it. Gas is under pressure. That's the universal sign for gas is under pressure is a, is a gas cylinder. Uh, then you have here in the middle, in the middle, it, it's a corrosive. Uh, it causes uh, skin uh, corrosion or burns, eye damage or corrosive to metals. Uh, and then you have the uh, exploding bomb pictograph, which tells whether it's an explosive or self-reactive or um, uh, organic peroxide. In the bottom here, you have a, a flame over a, a circle. That means it's an oxidizer that it shouldn't be mixed near any flammables or transported with any flammables. Uh, now the one in the middle here is actually an optional one. Uh, it talks about the environment that falls under the EPA. OSHA doesn't require this. Now the EPA may require it, but that's an environmental impact and you'll see a dead tree and some dead fish it looks like. And then of course, skull and crossbones, uh, that represents acute toxicity, uh, fatal or toxic. Now, guys, this is just a brief overview of, of the global harmonization system and it's part of our annual uh, training for HASCOM that uh, all companies are required to go through. Make sure you have a copy of the, the SDS book for the chemicals you have on a job site so and, and then make sure you train your employees on on how to use the SDS, how to read the SDS, where they can find the SDS as part of the regular training in the HASCOM. Uh, that's going to conclude it. This is a short video. I just wanted to get that out there in case some of you had to do your annual uh, has, uh, hazardous communication training, the annual hazardous communication training for your company. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, guys, until we see each other again, remember to take care of yourself because you're number one. And look out after your co-workers. And I will see you in the field.